Supreme Court announced that every individual is entitled under the Equal Protection Clause to the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution to be treated as an individual, not based on racial stereotypes or ethnic stereotypes, which in the Harvard case were mostly to the detriment of students or applicants of Asian background, Asian descent, who were clearly discriminated against. And the Supreme Court so established that and said uh, that merely wanting a diversity of race is not enough to overcome that equal protection that each individual is entitled to. So legally, an enormously important decision that will have implications, I think, far beyond admission to universities, which was the narrow context of it. In terms of the poison pill, there was a sentence in there where the Supreme Court said, well, you can't consider the race of an applicant off the table you can consider the experience that the applicant has had with racism or other fact, similar factors. And uh, that is a loophole that Harvard seized on immediately. We can't ask you what race you are and you can't, we can't take that into consideration, but you can tell us in your essay about that. Uh, now, in the very next sentence, the Supreme Court said, well, what we just said can't be used as a loophole. <laughs> you, you can't just use essays to get around our other findings. So it's a little unclear how that's going to play out in the real world. But it clearly there was a little bit of an opening that Harvard and others have seized on. But I think that gets to a, a different point, which is the focus on race, the focus on multiculturalism is so deeply embedded in the university bureaucracy and many corporate bureaucracies now in HR departments that no matter what the Supreme Court said, they're going to try to find a way to get around it. And we've seen that and we tracked at my website a lot of those developments before the decision when everybody knew what the decision was likely to be but hadn't been issued yet. So they start eliminating SAT scores and other uh, standardized testing because the Asian students in the Harvard case, their primary piece of proof were the disparate SAT scores required for an Asian student to get accepted versus a black or Hispanic student to get accepted, and even as to a white student uh, to get accepted. Uh, clearly discriminatory. So they're not going to eliminate their racial preferences, they're going to eliminate the proof of their racial preferences, things like standardized test scores. There's no doubt that the Supreme Court decision is enormously important, but no one should kid themselves that all of a sudden with the stroke of a pen, the Supreme Court eliminated racial preferences in higher education. They will continue, but they're gonna continue either even deeper underground than before. And one of the things that we're very focused on is how technology is gonna assist in hiding this the use of algorithms to evaluate, the use of artificial intelligence. We're already seeing this play out at entities like LinkedIn, where they're using their algorithms to present what they call diverse pools of candidates, which are essentially manipulated pools of candidates. You're going to see that, that the way the algorithms are being certified, because they have to be certified, and it's a big Biden administration push, as bias-free and the way the artificial intelligence that's used to evaluate applicants is certified is going to have to prove that it's bias-free. Well, what do they mean by bias-free? What they mean are group results. That if you, your algorithm for an engineering position is producing a pool of candidates based on GPA and where you went to school and what your experience is, that does not reflect the racial mix that they think should be presented, it's not bias-free, so they make you go back and tweak your algorithm. What is your algorithm looking for? And so basically what you're going to see is technology developing in a way that gets them the quotas they want without the university or the company having to do a thing. All they will say is, well, we are using artificial intelligence that's been certified as bias-free, but in fact it's actually quotas, it's stealth quotas. Well, it's, it's, it's like the height of doublespeak. It's precisely biased. It's precisely biased to yeah. achieve a, the quota, the racial and ethnic and other quotas 
that they want. That's how it's biased, and that has now been defined as bias-free. So that's another thing that we're seeing even before the Supreme Court decision that I think is going to ramp up. They will essentially offload the discrimination to the coders who create the technology to screen people because the reality is certainly large companies they don't go through a thousand resumes they have software that sorts it and tells them you know of the thousand people who applied for this job who are the ten you should interview uh, and so that's very common and it's going to be work its way into the medical field it's going to work its way into the legal field so getting back to your original question Supreme Court decision, hugely important. There is a loophole. We don't know how that's going to play out in the real world, but the universities will find, try to find a way around it. You know, it of course reminds me of what Google euphemistically called machine learning fairness, if you remember that term. It basically create biased results so that they're fair, which is essentially yes. the, exactly the same principle here. Um, I mean, that's very difficult to screen for unless you have another some other kind of group that's going in and just looking what you know what what would a, what would a random choice look like or what would a merit based choice look like or what is even if you're removing the measures of merit even then how would you even know that it would just struck me what a dangerous time to be full speed developing AI because this is right now the AI development is kind of going into that you know, the, the exponential curve part of its development. And if this stuff is all baked in there, and then we have bureaucracies implementing it, that, that feels like a very dystopian future to me. It really is. It's really going to be baked into the system. Quotas and group results are going to be baked into the system without any regard for the individual. And it's going to take place at such a deep level that it will be very hard to prove you're going, you would literally have to go to the software company that developed the software to find out how they did it. That's multiple levels removed. The administrator at Cornell or Harvard or Yale can say, I know nothing about this. We don't discriminate. We're just using software that says it's bias free. Don't sue me, okay? Um, the hiring person at a company can, can honestly say, I'm not discriminating, I'm just accepting, or at least as a starting point, what this bias-free software provides. And so it's going to take place at a level which is very hard for people to know. You, even some employers may not know that they're not getting the best engineers, they're just getting a manipulated pool of candidates to achieve a desired quota based on race and ethnicity and other factors. So it's very insidious. I think that people in Congress and Capitol Hill don't understand it. There's been legislation proposed, which I think will make this worse, and it's bipartisan legislation. It's not on the table now. It was proposed last year as part of the, a larger Privacy Act, but there is a section in it dealing with algorithmic biases, mm -hmm. and I think the people who drafted that either are ignorant, which is probably most likely, they just used verbiage that sounded nice, or somebody who has an agenda work their way into it. And that's something that we're going to be focusing on, is calling on Congress not to make it worse. And I think what you'll see is you will hopefully see also push back at the state level, because these softwares, these algorithms get, that get certified, Florida, Texas, other red states may need to consider legislation that says, if we are going to use as a state um, software, algorithms, artificial intelligence that's been certified as bias-free, it also has to be certified that no tweaks were made to it to achieve quotas. But people have to wake up to it, and that's one of the things we're going to try to do, is wake people up to what is happening is going to be more insidious than what we call affirmative action, because it's going to take place at a level that people don't even know it's happening.